Welcome back, everyone. My name is Stephen Rodriguez. I am your true champion, and today we're looking at the top 10 decks for the North American International Championships. Uh, let's go. All right, everyone, here we are in PTCGO. I'm going to be showing you guys off technically 11 decks today, uh, my top 10 decks, plus one really special honorable mention that I want to bring up to you guys. Um, really quickly, I want to make a quick little shout out to my Twitch channel. We just wrapped up a 19 hour charity stream for Autism Speaks this weekend. It was amazing. I want to do a huge shout out to all the True Squad members that were out there. And I want to shout everyone out that is possibly going to the North American International Championships. I will be actually going to this tournament, which is actually super exciting to make a top 10 for a tournament that I'm actually going to uh, for once. So that's going to be super awesome. Uh, if, if any of you guys are there and want to say hi, feel free to come say hi. I'm a really tall, uh, flamboyant man. I would love to get to know you guys a little bit better. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram too so that you guys can see me document my entire trip uh, to Ohio. It's going to be an amazing amazing time i fly out on thursday uh it should be tuesday the, the day that you guys are getting this probably tuesday night um but anywho uh with all that being said let's, let's go ahead and drop drop jump right into this top 10. now my honorable mention is going to be granville uh this is a very basic orangaroo uh granville reds challenge deck red bull as it's popularly called it's also a really cool mercargo version that arlo neal took to get top 32 at the madison regional championships and i think Granville is a very powerful deck, very good, uh, has like some consistency issues, and I don't think has a great wheezing matchup, uh, but all in all, I think if you're very competent in your ability to play Granville, you can perform well. The only reason why it's not jumping into the top 10 is if you guys have watched these videos before, the other two top 10s that I did, I grade these decks, not really on my personal opinion of how good they are, but realistically on their power, or like what they can do, and how popular I perceive them to be for the actual championships. I don't think Granville will be that popular even at all, but I think it has enough power to warrant me mentioning it because you guys could play against it and should probably keep in mind that Granville is a deck that's still in this format and could be kind of scary for certain decks. Like if you're playing Reshazard or if you're playing Picaram, you should be a little bit afraid of these decks. But if you're playing Zapdos, if you're playing Weezing, you're fine. Don't, don't worry too much about Granville. It's not really gonna be that detrimental to you, but I figured I should bring it up in this video, just in case there's one person out there that's like, excuse me, Steven, you forgot to bring up Granbull. And I'm like, whoa, 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 no, I didn't. Here he is. You guys can play it. It's pretty good. If you want to, go right ahead. Now, before we get into the actual uh, top 10, I want to make a quick little uh, aside here for you guys that this video is not really my opinion based. Like, 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 like I said, I'm grading these decks based on how popular I think they're going to be and how powerful I've seen them perform or I have a perception of how good they'll be for the actual meta. So in terms of like where you guys should kind of value number 10 versus number one, virtually I value them all the same. You know, like to me, the idea of this top 10 is for me to show you guys, A, what decks are probably gonna be there, big showing. And number two, to kind of give you guys an idea that any, all these decks are good and they have a chance of doing very well. Day two or winning even. So I do not think one deck is necessarily better than the other. I do have my own personal opinion <laughs> about which decks are better but i'm kind of leaving that out um of this video if you guys hear me mention some things that kind of sounds like i'm bagging on the archetype i promise i'm not i'm just pointing out some possible flaws that could exist to help you guys make better decisions about what decks to play or to test given that you only have three days uh to test still i'm doing this a little bit late but i was really busy this weekend with all kinds of files and stuff hopefully i'm getting this video out to you guys fast enough for you guys to uh have enough information to get ready for the North American International Championships. If you guys are excited and like this video, want me to do more videos like this, uh, like I said, I've done two already and they've been performing very well, uh, be sure to hit that like button and let me know what, 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 what about this video you liked and what about it you didn't like down in the comment section below. But with all that being said, let's hop into actual number 10 of my top 10 decks for the North American International Championships. Oh, uh, really quick, I'll be showing off deck lists for every single deck provided. And if you guys just want like a nice little hard copy of the things that way it's easier for you guys to copy and paste into your own PTCO account. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to the Discord uh, down in the description below. There's a chat in there called Steven's Decks. All these decks will be in there. You guys can go ahead and copy paste them into your PTCO account from there. I got you guys. No worries. Uh, but Ultra Malamar is number 10. I know, right? Ultra Malamar. You're like, that people still play that deck? Yes and yes. There are some diehard Malamar people out there. Uh, I live in California. There's lots of Malamar people out here uh, and I actually respect the power of this deck I think it has a great matchup against all the tag team variants Picaram and Rushes aren't included I also really like the whole like idea of Giratina as an attacker in this format he's just so beefy and can do so good against Zapdos 
Um, I feel like if you want like a really good 50-50 deck and going into NAIC and you're just want to just try and win based on your own merit and skill, I think Ultra Malamar is a really good call. Like if you're confident in your list and confident in your ability to play Ultra Malamar, you can win a lot of matchups. Like you have the damage to take out the big tag team GXs, but you also have the really cool strategy of non-GX based with Giratina cycling and even spread damage. Like you can take multiple prize cards against decks like Zapdos or... Um, even Weezing, if they bench too many basic Pokemon and don't evolve them. So, yeah, I do think this next worst, worst matchup, though, is Weezing, because it's just, like, crazy how much damage they can do. Um, but I, I do like it on the whole. You know, Zoroark still isn't the best matchup in the world, but a lot of Zoroark decks are a lot different than what they used to be. And I don't think Persian necessarily beats... I, I, don't, I don't think Zoroark Persian necessarily beats uh, Necrozma. Zoro, Zoroark Dugong might, but I'm not, I'm, I haven't tested that that much. But I'm pretty sure deck is pretty good on the whole uh this the, this list is pretty cl uh, cut and clear consistent there's nothing really spicy about it uh, you guys can you Malamar people out there know what spice is that and whatnot also this deck has been so known for so long that you just kind of understand how to play against everything in the meta so you have a really consistent confident call for NAIC and I think a lot of people are just gonna naturally make that kind of consistent clear-cut call which is why I think it'll be popular enough to warrant being on the top 10 uh, so those are my thoughts on uh Ultra Necrozma, Malamar, hope you guys uh, make, make sense of what I've been saying here. All this gibberish that's coming out of my mouth. I'm just trying to give you guys all the honest information uh, that I can right now for these decks. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing really much else to say. If you got the list and you want to play it, play it. It's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, with that, we're going to move on to deck number nine, Stall. <laughs> Stall is really, this is really low on the list for Stall for me. Uh, I actually love Stall. I've been saying that since my first top ten. Uh, when, when everyone was like, what are we going to play for Santa Clara? What are we going to play for Santa Clara? Dude, stall is the way to go. You're going to kill everyone. No one's going to know what's up. But stall has steadily been pushed out of the format, unless you're a European player and, you, and you're diehard stall. Uh, this deck is going to be nowhere near as popular. It's, it's never been a popular deck, but it's always been so powerful that it makes up for the fact that it's, um, that it's not popular. But by being not popular and decreasing in uh, the overall power because so many decks just have the tools to beat it. Piram is gaining a lot of popularity uh, right now going into the NAIC and, and famously Piram does very well against uh, Stall because of the, of the massive energy acceleration and just the damage they can put out which is insane. Um, but I think the deck is still really strong. This version of the list is uh, Hoopa, Lugia, you know, good old Bastion stuff, Steven Dissolve, all that jazz. Um, I don't think the Bioplume version or variant is the way to go anymore i think but i mean if you want to like have that shock factor of vile plume sure go ahead but i think enough people know of vile plume and are teching against vile plume like people still play stealthy hood in decks like which and pikaram so i'm like i don't see the reason to play um that version anymore i think hoopa is still the best way to go uh it's just, it's just more consistent on average version plus if you do expect there to be a lot of stall uh this deck has more text for the mirror uh, which is important. Plus, Lugia GX is just a busted card, so being able to throw that in uh, to your list is really nice. Having that extra energies, you can even play cards like Larvitar and Shrine of Punishments to try and take actual knockouts against Pikaroms over time if you're really worried about that matchup. Um, I really like this deck moving forward. I don't necessarily think it's going to be game changer. I don't think it'll win at all, but I really like Stall. I've always liked Stall in the sense of like it's your deck to play to try and just beat your opponents. I really love control in the sense that you're not playing to win, you're playing to make sure your opponent loses. If that makes sense, you guys, like I really like that idea because your opponent can't win, so they have to beat you and, it, and your deck is designed so they can't do that, so it's really cool. Um, and I feel like this deck can just take advantage of a lot of new players or just like like beginner players who go to NAIC just for fun. Um, so if you wanna get some easy wins in day one, uh, but kind of suffer day two, uh, stall might, might might be the deck for you if you just want to but but uh it's very skill intensive very hard uh it's very draining on someone i don't think no one i don't think anyone wants to like do that for nine rounds uh there'll be people playing it of course but i don't think there'll be enough to warrant it being any higher on the list its power is still there but with Beshazard being turbo variants and with just with so much energy in play all the time that i feel like it just doesn't have the power that it needs to actually make a big enough showing to go higher on the list however it's still really good and I do still like it. Moving on to deck number eight. Baby Blacephalon. You'll notice that on this list, I don't have Blacephalon GX. And that's because I don't like Blacephalon GX. Now, I know I said I kept my opinion out of this. 
and the Cephalon GX is going to be a deck that's going to be at the North American International Championships with like Naga Nado and that. However, I'm not including it on this list because I think there are better fire variants and this is one of them. I think the new version of the Cephalon with, with Salazzles and Welders and, you know, Cynthia's instead of Greens is actually way better than people give it credit for. Uh, I think it does very well against Zapdos. I think it does super good against Reshazard. And I really like its um, Zoroark matchup in the sense that it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Uh, you now have little bits of counters. You have your own Mesephalon GX to get in there. You have Salazzle to get back from being more shadowed or judged after losing your Mesephalon to a field blower. And which, like, like, like it, it has comeback potential now. And I feel like having comeback potential in a deck like Mesephalon Baby is actually super strong and worth testing. Um, so huge shout out to Zach Lesage for making this list and sharing it with the world. I really like it. I think I think the only reason why he didn't get top eight was he got like one unlucky loss against the Weezing player or something like that. I, I forget what he said, but uh, it's really strong. And I think this deck needs to be on people's radar because you know, I feel like too many people are giving credit to Blacephalon GX and not Baby because we were so fast to discount Baby Blacephalon at the beginning of Unbroken Bonds format that now everyone's just like, what does it even do? It's just bad Blacephalon GX. I'm like, no, it's better because it's non-GX and Zap Beasts and Weezing are gaining popularity. So you guys should definitely pay attention to this deck and even consider testing it because honestly, it's so easy to pilot and really fun. Uh, I really do actually like this deck moving forward and I think it's very powerful. The only reason why it's not any higher on the list is again, this question of popularity. I don't think enough people will have faith in it uh, to actually commit to playing a deck of Baby Blacephalon for the entire North American International Championships. I think they're going to much rather go with the Welder version of Blacephalon GX. But all those Blacephalon players out there, give this deck a shot. I think it's honestly better uh, just because it's a non-GX based deck. And that seems to be what the format is looking into right now because the tag teams were ruling for so long at the beginning of the Unbroken Bots format that now it's time for the uh, non-GX variants to come in and smack some stuff in the face. So I like this deck a lot. Definitely has a good Regisard, Picaram, and Blacephalon GX matchup, as well as uh, pretty much everything else I've mentioned already. It does It beats Stall really, really easily. Uh, does kind of okay against Ultra Giratina, I guess. Mm, I think that'd be pretty 50-50 on the, on the essence of, like, you need to have, like, a really good burst GX turn, probably, to win the game. You, you, you either do it super early, to the point where your Blacephalon GX dying doesn't matter, or you do it, like, super late just to win the game. That's where I think, like, like it like it really matters when you use this guy. In that matchup like if you start him that's bad unless you can get like two free turns out of him but it's really good if you just plop him on board and win the game like that so it's a two each their own kind of thing um i really like this deck i think does okay against zoroark gong that's the one matchup that i'm like Ugh, that, that kind of really sucks but zoroark gong beats they beat specific on gx anyway so like i don't see the problem there either because you just snipe two Blacephalon GXs if they're dumb enough to play two of them, and you just go kill, they go beast ring, kill you, like cool, kill you back. What are you gonna do now? Judge nothing, you know. Uh, moving on to number seven. Sorry again, guys, if it feels like I'm kind of rushing through this one versus the other ones. I just feel like I've been making these top ten videos too long to the point where no one wants to watch all the way through. So if it feels like I'm not properly explaining my reasons for all the decks, feel free to write a comment down in the description in the comments below and I will gladly respond to any questions if you guys want to ask me questions live and in person I do go live every Tuesday Thursday and Friday afternoon Pacific Standard Time I'm actually thinking of making it at least every other day uh, now that I'm on summer vacation so let me know some of the best days that you guys think I should stream PTCGO content specifically and I'll uh, think of, of changing my schedule around a bit but right now though it's Tuesdays Thursdays Fridays I obviously will not be streaming this this week because I'll be at the North American International Championships. However, I might do a couple IRL streams while like, I'm, I'm in my hotel room or testing or even like during the actual tournament. So that could be pretty cool. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about all that stuff down in the description below. Moving on to deck number seven, and it's Honchkrow Spirit Tomb. Umbreon, you know I'm going to talk about this deck. If you guys did not see it earlier, I did do a profile of this deck slash gameplay demonstration uh, on my channel the other day. Link in the i cards above this deck. Grant Manley, thank you and your friend who also showed you the deck. Thank you, those two gentlemen, for showing this deck to the world. I have been saying for the longest time how much I love Umbreon and Spirit Tomb in all my past top 10 videos, and this is no exception. Now we have the big bad Honchkrow GX, so we can destroy Weezing players and their dreams, and it's amazing. I love this deck so freaking much. It does so well against Picaram, Reshazard, Weezing, the big, like, just popular decks in the format. I love it so freaking much. However, 
it has a very, and I mean truly awful, uh, Zapdos matchup because they're just non-GX and they can keep up with you and you just cannot do enough damage fast enough to uh, warrant like that prize trade. Like, like you lose the prize trade uh, so much. Normally Umbreon is enough in the Hoopa variant of this deck to try and get you there because Hoopa has a lot of HP, so it's hard for them to continually one-shot it. But uh, they can just kill Spirit Tombs and your, and your Jirachis and your Umbreon's fast enough before you can actually kill any of their Zapdos and it's really bad. Plus late game, they have Coco. And unless you have like three tur free turns with like Spirit Tombs in play, you're not killing that thing. And you should never play Hotchkrow against that deck, obviously, because that's just free for them to kill you. So the Zepdos matchup is so much to be desired, which is the only reason why this thing is not like number two or number one, because Zapdos is so bad. And Zapdos is going to be like one of the most popular decks, uh, looking like it anyway, going into the North American International Championships. So rip me. But if you think about it, like wheezing like so like the reason why i really like honcho is that depending on what you think you're going to play against this deck is a great call it's so powerful it's freaking so powerful like you do 220 damage with a hustle belted spirit tomb like that's insane dude and then you can use like a mew or even a honcho set up damage and just take one shots on tag teams or even better just two shot tag teams because you're a non-gx deck and don't care about two shotting them it's insane um but anywho the reason why this deck is on here is because I think it's powerful enough to warrant being on here, but it won't be popular enough to the point where it's any higher. But if you think you're only going to play against like Weezing and tag team decks all day, dude, play this deck because you'll you'll beat them more, more often than you're not. You're favored against everything except for Zapdos, uh, which really sucks. Also, uh, I think Ultra Malamar is 50-50 because um, Sky Switching like really sucks. But, and you can't stop that. So keep out. Like if people want to play Ultra Malamar, that's also a bad matchup, but it's whatever. Um, but Cephalon's pretty good. But baby's, uh, baby's okay. Uh, I don't know how that matchup actually shapes out. I, I guess it depends on if, on if they use the uh, Cephalon GX or not. Uh, if they have to, you might have a shot. If they don't have to, you might not have a shot. Because they can take knockouts, in theory, faster than you can. Uh, but you do have Retaliate Embryon. And you don't play Field Blower. If you play Field Blower, you could probably win. Uh, but hard to say. Um, I really like this deck, though. I think it's good against... I, I also think it's good against Zor, even though people have been telling me it's not. I'm like, what is it? why does it lose to Zor? And they're like, you're going. I'm like, yeah, you're playing Mew. Put Mew down. You, you won't lose. Like, I don't understand what people are saying. You also have Honchkrow. You, you just sit Honchkrow with the active at Storm for all of eternity, and you win against Zor. So I don't know why people tell, are telling me that this deck loses to Zor, because I, I, don't, I don't think it does, and in my testing, it has not. Definitely consider this deck, or at the very least, understand what this deck does. Uh, and how to beat it. Watch out for Black Barbie and Prism Star. Don't let your opponent stick this on you uh, while they have Hotchko in the active, or just in general, because you ran out of stadium cards. Uh, that's a no-go for you guys. That'll end so badly. Uh, but anywho, I really like Hotchko GX Spiritomb moving forward. I think it's really powerful, and you guys should definitely think about it uh, as a possibility, or just in consideration for your testing. Anywho, moving on to the next deck. All right, guys, deck number six. We're talking about Reshazard. I know. Why is Reshazard so low on the list? There's two Reshazard deck lists on this list. People were begging me. I mean, I was getting DMs on Twitter, like, no, like nonstop during the last two um, what's, what, uh, top tens. And they were telling me, Steven, you should consider making Reshazard Turbo and Reshazard Greens two different decks because they work really differently and i'm like you're right random citizen you're right so i decided to make uh this deck and the other one register our greens two different archetypes two different decks because they do fundamentally work different this one's all about setting up a fast versus art as fast as possible with cards like kiawe and welder and the other one is more non-gx focused tries to just consistently get all your pieces all throughout the game and push with stuff like that this deck though has less tech ability but it does its best by playing cards like mill tank and that's kind of it that's kind of the only really real tech card in this deck well, arcanine i guess as well but you can also cut arcanine now because i don't think bioplume is going to be that popular anymore but if you're still afraid of Arc of bioplume or any kind of energy denial deck uh, arcanine is so good uh, for that kind of stuff also it's really good not to attack as well uh, for like Zapdos matchups and stuff. Um, but anywho, uh, I think Rush's Art is still really good. This is the deck that DDG used to get top four in second place at Madison. Uh, it's a really powerful deck. Miltank is really helpful against all the non-GX decks, uh, especially Weezing, uh, which popularly weren't that great matchups for Rush's Art. Also, having cards like Yahweh is just so oppressive to your opponent. Like you can just blow up so fast, and this deck goes through its deck like it's no like it's no one's business. You use Marshadow against your opponent because you just don't care about drawing that many cards. 
And uh, yeah, it's really powerful and it just gets the job done. Rich Start has been a king of this format for so long now. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. This deck will be power uh, very, very popular. The only reason why it's not any higher on the list is that I think every deck on top of it is even green, especially green Rich Start is actually more powerful. And I'll explain why green Rich Start is more powerful than this when we get to that point in the list. But for right now, this deck is really powerful. Uh, if you have a confident list or like a confidence in your list i should say and, and you know your matchups this one and greens really isn't a distinguishable choice like it's 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 not necessarily either or it's more like what are you feeling like that day because they both get the job done against most of the matchups that they're good against the only place where they kind of differ is the matchups that, that they're bad against this one is good against uh wheezing uh not good against Pacephalon. Uh, or Zapdos. The other one, Green Switch Wizard, I'll, I'll, I'll just explain right now, is I think better against the stuff that tries to counter Switch Wizard. And that's why I think it's a little bit better. And we'll get to those matchups later on. Moving on to deck number five. All right, it pains me to put Weezing this low on the list because I value Weezing so much. And I think it's one of the best decks in the format. And I will always say that it is. I am team Weezing all the way. This is my current list for Weezing uh, right now. I'm thinking of cutting uh, Mr. Mime for a counter catcher or a Guzma. I'm also considering cutting Persian as well for the same kind of thing because having some kind of counter catcher thing is helpful for all the Mews out there or for Mirror if they are playing Mew. But other than that though, I think uh, there's no real reason to play counter catcher other than chasing Mews for earlier damage or even just trying to finish off a certain GX Pokemon that your opponent's trying to hide on the bench because they're assuming you're not playing any gust effects. But anywho, um, Weezing is very powerful. I think having a free spread deck is really good in a, in, in a tournament as big as the NAIC. I think day one, your matchups are going to be so great. And if you're a good enough player and you play the right techs and you know your matchups and you don't like falter to good players who play against spread, like you have to understand how good players play against spread. You know, they're going to bench fewer Pokemon. They're going to, tr they're, they're going to try and make sure that they decide when you take knockouts versus you decide when you take knockouts. They'll get rid of your spell tags. They'll monitor which Pokemon to take out. They'll ignore your wheezings, kind of stuff like that. All the stuff that people, that, pro players do against wheezing versus all the stuff that newer players do against wheezing um i really like it the only problem that i have with wheezing right now is that everyone and their mother knows about wheezing you know wheezing uh, for santa clara i thought was a, a great call for madison i still thought was a great call because i think people weren't respecting it enough uh it turns out they were um which is good that, that, that they were doing that anyway um bad for me because i made the wrong call there but uh, i think people are going to respect wheezing so much during this tournament that one of two things are going to happen they're either going to play wheezing and then the mirrors are going to happen and the mirror for wheezing literally sucks uh so don't play that but uh i also think that there won't be that many zapdos so a lot of your free matchups are just going to go away like Blacephalon, gx like zapdos and you're going to play against a lot of pikaram and a lot of versus are playing mill tank or max potions or even mixed herbs god forbid and uh, who knows how those matchups are going to go because popularly, Reshazard is kind of 50 50 for Weezing for me. I don't really win Reshazard as, as much as I would like to because there's just like little things that go wrong. You know, you take one too many prize cards, so you can't use counter energies anymore because your opponent gave you that three prize thing and then they fell behind and then they're healing and then they get rid of all your counter energies or, they, or you just kind of run out um, against stuff like. Zapdos, even Zapdos isn't as free as it is, because if they just bench one Jirachi and, like, a Mew, it'll take you, like, six turns to knock out that Jirachi, and then six turns for them is, like, four knockouts on average against you, and then you're just, like, so far behind that by the time you start actually taking knockouts, who knows if you're going to win or not, so I definitely think that Weezing needs a high, it has actually a more higher skill cap than people think it does in order to actually do well, so my, my opinion is that for Weezing to do well, it has the power. For the popularity to be there, there needs to be enough people who are so confident in their ability to play Weezing against anything that they're going to actually do it. And I don't think there's enough people like that right now. I feel like people are either going to play Weezing because they're like, I don't know, it's cheap, it's all I can play, it's really fun. There's that, there's the people that just want to go brain dead and go splattering sludge, splattering sludge every single turn and try and win. And then there's the people that are like, I know everything about Weezing. I know my ins and outs. I know where to put damage. I know when to go for Tapu Lele. I know when to go for Larvitar. I know when to go for Honchkrow and all these little things. And the, and I feel like for, for, for the deck to actually do well, you need more of the third, like of the former people, people that are diehard Weezing versus just those people who are eh, Weezing. Let's just play that, I guess. So for me, the popularity is the actual goods amounts of popularity, like, like the popularity that actually matters for this deck doing well is going to be so low. 
it'll be popular in the sense that there'll be a lot of other people like oh, i'll just play wheezing but that's not actually good for the results of wheezing so if you're one of those people who are just like oh i guess i'll just play wheezing don't you're gonna lose if you're one of those people who are like i'm diehard wheezing i know my matchups do it i think you're i think you're looking really good um so i hope that makes sense to you guys if it didn't uh be sure to just ask me a question i know i i'm more vomiting right now and i'm very hard to like hear and understand i promise what i said kind of makes sense i hope it did anyway um me right now personally i'm really considering wheezing as an option i've played it all format i really know my matchups and i enjoy it a lot definitely considering cutting mr mime because i think zorwalk's a lot better than people think it is and i don't need it i don't really need mr mime for that but it, it is really good against stall uh, but so is persian i think persian's enough but anywho that's my opinions on wheezing it's number five moving on to deck number four all right guys speaking of zorwark here we are number four zorwark dugong now when i say so the, the list i'm showing you guys is zorwark dugong Again, all the lists can be found in the Discord. In, in the Discord, go ahead and put the link down in the description below. Um, but I think there's so many ways to play Zorark right now. There's Zorark Savali, Zorark Slowking, Zorark Slowking Dugong, like box, like with Marowak and like and like other uh, stage ones, which are both celebration energy. People, people even played like I think I saw someone play like Cocos Trap with Venomoth that like sniped 90 damage or something stupid like that. I think I saw someone playing that on ladder. So there's just so many ways to play Zoroark right now that it's not even funny. So I really feel like for you to be doing well with Zoroark, you need to have a competent list. Uh, I think Zoroark Dugong is probably the most consistent and best one right now. That's why I'm showing you guys that list. Um, or those that I'm working with right now anyway. Um, I think it's very similar to Stefan Ivanov's. Uh, I think I, th I think it is actually his. Because I, I, I remember cutting my Cynthia for a Tate and Liza. Because I, I saw him play it and I was playing pretty much the exact 60 before that. It's exact 60 before that. Oh, I can't speak. Um... I think Larvitar is really good to improve your peak and matchup because that's your worst matchup. Uh, and I think against everything else, you're either 50-50 or you just lose to it and you're kind of okay with that. I think Zap Beast is ugh, un unfavored, sadly, um, because Dugong just doesn't help. Uh, if they play two Buzzwool, you, you, your Devour Field isn't enough. Persian just gets Raffle Stomped, you know. There's so many bad things about that matchup that I, I wish it was better. Uh, hopefully, moving forward, we can make it better. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, though. Um, but anywho... I really do like Zorwark though on the whole. I, I've always been a fan of Zorwark. I've always played Zorwark uh, since it's been legal. I, if you're really confident in your list, again, it's, it's one of those things of just like, if you figured out what, what the Zorwark variant is for that tournament and you play it, you're, you're gonna do well, maybe even get top eight. But if you didn't, you might actually lose a lot more games than you probably were intending to. Um, but I know guys like Finnegan Lynch and other players that are really good Zorwark players, they're gonna play Zorwark and they're gonna have a broken list to try and counter the stuff that they're expecting and they're st and they'll still get maybe top 16 you know it's one of those things like the power for zoroark is there but you need to figure it out and that's the reason why i don't think zoroark will do as well as maybe people hope it is but it's still so good and it's really popular and i really think it's going to do like i think i think if, it, if, if it's going to win any tournament it's going to be this one like santa clara madison zoroark kind of fell through a little bit but this one I think I think I think I really think that if you have a good list and you know the meta and you know your matchups, this is the tournament where Zoroark is going to go. I'm going to win it um, because Zoroark just does that for <laughs> international championships. You know, Zoroark just comes out of nowhere and everyone's like, I didn't know Zoroark was still a thing, and then it wins the whole thing. You know, what I mean, it's one of those things. Um, so I think if you if you're if you're doing that and you and you're confident in your list, play it, dude. Uh, and definitely know how to play against Zoroark, obviously, guys, because Zoroark is going to be there. You're definitely going to play against at least one probably four it's one of those things uh, but yeah it's sadly on number four because i just feel like for the power to be there you need to have the right list and not enough people do uh, uh, or or even even still have the right list and know how to use your list in every single game uh it does require it has a much higher skill cap now than it ever did before uh in order to actually win games because there's just so much aggression in this format that zork just kind of falls behind a lot of the time and you, and you need to know how to catch up um, but anyway, moving on to deck number three. All right, guys, we're getting into the top three. And here we've got Pika Hram. This is Turo Pika Hram, no Jirachis, straight up, just let's freaking go. Uh, this is the list that Jesper Eriksson used to get top four at that regional this past weekend. I, I saw his list and I was like, that's dope. I'd recommend cutting the Stubbly Hood for like a Viridian Forest or even, uh, what was the other tech that I thought? A second Escape Rope could be really good. Uh, maybe even a third Zapdos could be pretty dope. But uh, anywho. This is Turbo Pigram. I really like Pigram, actually, uh, which is weird. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I've ever said that before. I like Pigram. Ugh, that's, that feels weird to say out loud. Um, but the deck just works, man. And it has this really neat uh, 
I don't want to say synergy, but like just meta placement where like if you take like a really early knockout with Zapdos against like Reshazard or something, you can actually win a prize trade against them despite your lack of damage. Um, but the only reason I don't have it any higher on the list is that now it's a known thing. The reason why I did so well at Madison and even the last regional uh, in Europe, or I think it was Europe, it could have been Japan, I don't remember where it was. Um, the reason why I did so well, in my opinion, is because it was kind of unknown. Like, everyone kind of, like, disregarded Pikaram going into those tournaments because they're like, ugh, Pikaram doesn't do enough damage to Rush Zard. Rush Zard just Rumble stomps it. And I'm like, no, guys, it has great attackers against Rush Zard. It has a way to two-shot them. If, if they attach too many energies, it, it has a way to punish them. And you still play more shadows, so you're still pretty uh, good against them. Um, and if they're not playing that much healing, you can kind of, like, don't matter. It doesn't matter if you if you don't really one-shot them that much. And don't worry, and you still have electric powers, obviously, so you can still one-shot them. It just takes a lot more out of you guys to do it. And Tag, and tag Bowl GX is still broken, so there's all that kind of stuff as well. And if they played Dedenne GX at all, the game's over, so that's that's pretty chill. Um, but anywho, the deck is just good still. And I think if you're confident in your ability to play Picaram, like, it's one of those things, like, oh, okay... Everyone, last format, was like, oh, Picaram is just really good, but my deck's going to beat it. I'm playing Zapdos. And then all those Picaram players that were diehard, like Gustavo or Andrew Mahone, were just beating all those Zapdos players. And they're like, well, how are you doing that? And I'm like, because they're diehard Picaram, and Picaram is strong enough to beat you. So it will beat you. So you need to know your Picaram matchup still. Test against it as much as possible, because you're going to play against it. You're going to play against it a lot, and you don't want to lose to Picaram. Like, if there's any deck this weekend that you don't want to lose to, my vote is, is it's this, because this will either be the most popular deck in the format, or, sorry, for the tournament, or it'll be the biggest deck in day two. Like, I really think that, like, if peek around players are diehard peek around players are playing this deck in day one, they're moving on to day two, and then there's a lot of them in day two, there might be a lot in the top eight. So you need to know how to beat this deck inside and out if you're planning on winning this tournament or just doing really well, or even day two. Um, but other than that, though, I think this list is really good. Uh, again, in the Discord, check it out. And my biggest recommendation, though, in terms of your matchups, is watch out for Zap Beasts because they're playing fighting Pokemon out the wazoo right now. Um, Weezing, you do pretty well against as long as you know the matchup. It's kind of a weird matchup too. You kind of like don't even really use. So like the idea is like you play it like you're playing Zap Beasts. Don't really benchmark Shadow to the to the very very end, but you want to try and whiff them on energies or something like that. And just try and abuse the fact that, that, that your peak ROMs have 240 HP. <laughs> and don't bench too many of them. Uh, also, don't bench Zero War just because. Don't bench the Den AGX at all. Uh, use Coco to like soak up damage and then bring out your new Coco at some point. Stuff like that. Um, but other than that, though, the deck's really powerful, uh, really consistent, and is Lightning. And Lightning's really good. <laughs> it's still really good. Uh, moving on to deck number two. Hey, do you, do you guys remember when I said Lightning was really good? Well, here's deck number two. It's Zap. Beasts or Zap Buzzwool, Viridian if you want to call it that. Uh, this is the deck that Magnus used to win the same regional that Jesper Erickson got top four at. Uh, this is Zap Beasts. Also, Zap Beasts uh, won the Origins special event by Daniel Altavilla. I don't know what his list looked like, but I believe it was the Rainbow Energy version with Buzzmosa. I could be I could be incorrect on that though, so don't quote me on that kind of stuff. Either way though, it was Zap Beasts. It played Buzzwool. It played Zap Dose. That kind of stuff. Um, this deck though plays Nine Ligo, Psychic Energies, and Viridian Forest instead as its engine because it wants to do better against Zoroark, is my assumption of why he plays it this way. And honestly, I like his list a lot. I think it's very consistent. He's not playing Thunder Mountain, instead, he's playing Shrine of Punishments. Um, I don't know how good that is. Um, I do agree though that you don't need Thunder Mountain, but if you want to like get a really fast type of Goku GX in response and you're not playing Thunder Mountain, it could be harder, obviously, because you need more energies. But maybe he's just confident in the fact that he has all the Viridian Forests and he can get all the energies he wants over time so maybe that's what it's about but anywho here's the list that beast is so powerful right now it, it, it is or it, it, it's, it's either the best or at least at the very least the second best non-gx deck in the format that wheezing is arguably arguably better in the sense that it beats zapdos so you know whatever that is but i don't even think it beats zapdos as much as people think it does like wheezing for me is kind of like against a good zapdos players like maybe 60 40 not really like 80 20 like people think it is um but it, it doesn't matter too much. Um, the reason why Zapdos isn't number one is purely on the, on the fact of I think Weezing is going to be popular enough to kind of scare people away from playing Zapdos. Also, it's one of those things of like, when Zapdos wins, it doesn't win again. So people don't like playing it two tournaments in a row. Like, do you guys remember when Isaiah Williams won uh, the, I want to say, Australia International? Uh, the Latin American International, I think. No, it, 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 it was Oceania uh, with Zapdos. 
And then the very next tournament, Zapdos was like nowhere to be found. Like he used like a very similar deck and just like they dropped out, like did so bad uh, compared to winning an international at the next regional. So popularly, people go, oh, hey, Zapdos won, so I shouldn't play that anymore because people are, gonna, are now going to counter it. It's one of those things like if people aren't expecting Zapdos, you can punish them because Zapdos is really strong. But if people are expecting Zapdos, which they are, then they're going to counter it. And that means people who were going to play Zapdos are now no longer, no longer going to. However, I think this is like a weird scenario for us where people aren't going to care. Because like realistically, what are you going to do to beat Zapdos as a Retrozard player? You're going to play more Volcanians. Well, you still can lose because Burt Walters played a deck that in theory should beat Zapdos like every single time. Because he played four mixed herbs and he played four uh, baby Volcanian. That should be good enough to kill Zapdos decks. And it wasn't. Uh, so it's definitely one of those things of like, I don't know where Zapdos really stands right now. Because the counters to Zapdos don't really seem to be working as well as they used to. Um, like, I don't even think Zoroark decks beat Zapdos anymore, even though they still play Lolan Muck. So it's one of those things. Um, I think Zapdos though is really powerful, and I think it might be the most popular non-GX deck going into the NAIC, and that's why it's number two, guys. Like, really. And it's definitely going to be Zap Beast. It's not going to be any other Zapdos deck. It's going to be either this or the Rainbow Energy Buzzmosa version or some variant of all that stuff um, mixed together. Um, I do really like, though, Double Buzzwall, and I also really like No Rainbow Energy because I do think your Zoroark matchup is a lot better if you don't play Rainbow Energies. But it's one of those things of, like, two each their own. You can play whatever variant you want. I think they're both equally good. Uh, I just think they have more strengths in certain matchups. Like, like, like the Buzzmosa version does really well against Weezing. Uh, because you, you have this big tanky thing that just like sits there and snipes damage forever uh, late late in the game and then goes for a big old beast game GX attack uh, against like a Jirachi or like if, if their Weezing variant is playing Jirachi uh, or even against the mirror match where you just kill a Jirachi for free and win the game. So it's one of those things. Um, but other than that though, I think I think this is actually really strong and it only isn't number one because, well, I'll show you guys why in just a second. Here we go, guys. Number one is Rushizard Green. So this is the exact list that Burt Walters used to get second place at the regional this weekend. And honestly, this deck is busted, dude. Like I have said it since Santa Clara. Like if you're playing Rushizard, I think the Green's version is the best way to go. It is arguably less consistent. I agree, but the power that it has, it just doesn't matter. All you gotta do is draw cards and attach energies, and the deck works, man. And if you get a greens like two turns in a row, you're good, fam. You're gonna, you're, you're good. You're so golden, Pony Boy. It's not even funny playing double Kukui is so freaking good for the mirror match. Oh my god, the mirror match is so free with Kukui. Also, having Volcanian at a four of is oh my gosh, delicious. You you beat almost every non GX deck. Who cares about Weezing when you only attach like like bench one or two Pokemon anyway during a game? You play Max Potion. You play freaking mixed herbs now, and you have Ace Roll. Like, you're not losing to Weezing with this much healing in your deck unless they're playing, like, Quad Frost Rotom or something. You know what I mean? Like, you're not losing. Uh, the Mixed Herbs inclusion was really interesting, and I loved loved it in testing. I think the power of this deck alone makes it number one, and it's going to be popular because it's a Rush Start deck. Now, like I said before, this is better than the Turbo version, in my opinion, because it's better against the non-GX decks in the format. That's what's really important here. The other version falters so badly to non-GX decks because if it just starts an Eevee Snorlax or a Rush Start, you just can fall so behind so fast because they can just take quick knockouts on you. But in this deck, half the time you're going to start a Volcanian. And if you start Volcanian, you go second, you Flare Starter into another Volcanian or onto a Eevee Snorlax or onto a Rush Start, you're set up, you're good to go. But it gets like a non GX deck, so you let them kill four, like, or two to four Volcanians, and then they need to kill two GX tag teams. Like, that's crazy, you know? Um, the way that this deck can just manipulate the prize trade is so incredible to me. Um, playing Kakubi and Judge and Greens is so awesome. Uh, I personally do not like the fact that he played only one Switch. I would definitely play two Switch in here, find the room for that. I'm not sure where the room is, though, because this list is super tight and hard to find space for. I understand that. Um, but I, I would try and find some room for a second switch or even a pal pad so that way you guys can use Guzma more than twice or Acerola more than once. Uh, stuff like that. But anywho, uh, I think it's like super cool. Healing in Rushizard is so needed right now. I think it destroys everything in the format except maybe Honchkrow. Like, I think Honchkrow honestly beats this deck because a Rushizard player, unless they know what you're doing, is never just going to heal 30 damage or 40 damage off their Rushizard. They're just going to heal like. 180 or something so as long as you just do like a mew ping every like three turns or also unfair gx is really powerful i should say 
unpair GX, get rid of all their greens or whatever supporters they grab. Setting up for the next turn is super good um, as well. If you get like a really early Honchro and you're going first or something like that. Um, so I actually like Honchro against this deck a lot. I think Baby Blacephalon does really well against this. I also think that Nag Quag, if that's still floating around out there, could do very well. Um, the reason why Nag Quag isn't on this list is that I don't think anyone's going to play it. <laughs> It's the sad thing, so that's why I'm not even including it. But people could, and it's out there, so that's kind of scary for people. Also, the deck is so linear, and again, the consistency is out there. So while this deck may be number one, I do not, I'm not saying it's going to win. I'm just saying it's really good. If you want to play it, you probably should. Uh, and if you're confident in your list, uh, you might uh, you might, you might have to have, have the meta call, uh, in a sense, where you just have so much power that you just don't care. Because, like, in a, in, in a day like the NA, like, in a tournament like the NAIC, what really matters is your longevity. Like, how long, how many games can you play? Because towards the end, if you're not playing against, like, expert players or pro players, all you got to do is outthink your opponent, like, two steps of the way of, in the game, and you're going to win because they're fatigued, everyone's tired, you want a deck that's pretty easy. This deck is as easy as it gets, I think, <laughs> and it's really awesome. Having Judge in there too, by the way, is super cool. Um, if you get Charm Mar Shadow though, it kind of sucks. It really does. But all you really need is a, is a Fire Energy and a Volcanion turn one. And then you have like two or three turns at that point to get our greens and then you're good to go. So I do like this deck a lot. I do not think it's going to necessarily win, but it definitely has got a good shot. It's definitely going to be super popular. And it has everything it takes to win. And that's why I'm talking about this deck here as number one. But every other deck that I've said on this top 10 has a shot of winning, in my opinion. But... You need to be a bit, you need to have more confidence in some or even more skill in some than maybe others and that's where the top 10 distinctions lie in power and in popularity but guys with all that being said thank you guys for watching this video i hope you learned something from it if you guys would like me to elaborate on anything that i talked about feel free to ask a question down in the comments below check out the discord for the deck list in case you guys could not get them while watching this video down in the description below feel free to follow me on twitch tv forward slash champion Steven down in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram so that you guys can keep up with all the shenanigans that I'll be doing this weekend at the North American International Championships. Maybe I'm going to win. Maybe I'll vlog. Maybe I'll do a live thing from my hotel room. Who knows? It's going to be an exciting weekend for me. Uh, but guys, with all that being said, I have been your true champion, Steven. Always remember to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I will see you all next time. Peace out.